Here's an equation that at first glance might seem intimidating with all those exponentials floating around, but there's something beautiful hiding beneath the surface, a structure that, once we see it, makes everything click into place. The first step is to reveal what's really going on here by rewriting this in a way that makes the pattern more obvious. So here's what we're working with. Now the key insight comes from this term, e to the power of negative x. When we see a negative exponent, that's mathematics telling us we're working with a reciprocal. So e to the negative x becomes 1 divided by e to the x. This small change is going to make all the difference. Here's where things get interesting. Notice that e to the x appears in two places, once by itself, and once in the denominator of a fraction. This repetition is like a mathematical hint that we should try a substitution. This approach is incredibly powerful because it can reveal familiar structures, like quadratic equations, that are hiding inside what initially looks like something much more complicated. So let's call e to the x something simpler. Let's just call it u. Now let's see what happens when we apply this substitution to our equation. Everywhere we see e to the x, we replace it with our new variable u. And look at that. What seemed complicated has become something much more familiar. u plus 1 over u equals 5. Now this might not look like a quadratic yet, but we're just one step away from revealing what this equation really is at its core. The fraction is making things a bit messy, so let's clear it out by multiplying everything by u. When we multiply everything by u, we get u squared plus 1 equals 5u. To put this in standard quadratic form, we need to gather all terms on one side. Moving 5u to the left side gives us a beautiful quadratic, u squared minus 5u plus 1 equals 0. Now, this particular quadratic doesn't factor in a clean way, but that's what the quadratic formula is for. It's our reliable tool for any quadratic equation. For our equation, a is 1, b is minus 5, and c is 1. Substituting these into the quadratic formula gives us this. Working through the arithmetic, we get 5 plus or minus the square root of 21, all divided by 2. So u can take on two values, and they both involve the square root of 21. Now, before we get too excited, we need to pause and ask, do both of these values actually make sense for our original problem? Remember what u represents, it's e to the power of x. And here's a key fact about exponential functions. e, to any real power, is always positive. It never equals zero, and it's never negative. So both of our u values need to be positive. Let's check whether they are. The first solution, where we add 5 and the square root of 21, is obviously positive since we're adding positive numbers. But what about the second one? When we subtract the square root of 21 from 5, do we still get something positive? Well, let's think about this. 5 is the same as the square root of 25, and since 25 is bigger than 21, 5 must be bigger than the square root of 21. So 5 minus the square root of 21 is indeed positive. Both of our u values check out. Great. Now we can go back to our original variable x and find the values we're actually looking for. Since u equals e to the x, we have e to the x equal to each of our two solutions. To solve for x, we need to undo that exponential. The way to do that is with the natural logarithm, which is the inverse of the exponential function. Taking the natural log of both sides gives us our final answer for x. Now before we visualize this, I want to show you something beautiful about these two solutions. There's a hidden relationship between them that reveals the deeper structure of this problem. So we have two different values of x. Let's take a closer look at what's going on inside those logarithms. 
This second expression might look completely different from the first, but watch what happens when we do a little algebraic magic. I'm going to multiply by one, but in a very clever disguise, multiplying by the conjugate divided by itself. When we multiply out the numerator, we get a difference of squares pattern, which gives us 25 minus 21, which is 4. After some simplification, this becomes 2 divided by 5 plus the square root of 21. But look at this. This is exactly 1 divided by our first expression. The two arguments are reciprocals of each other. And this connects to a beautiful property of logarithms. The log of 1 over something equals the negative of the log of that something. So our second solution for x is simply the negative of our first solution. This beautiful symmetry isn't just a coincidence. It's telling us something deep about the structure of the original equation. The algebra has given us our answer, but sometimes a picture can give us even deeper insight. Let's see what this looks like visually. Let me set up some axes to show you what's happening. Our original equation is really asking, where do two functions intersect? One is this curve, y equals e to the x plus e to the negative x. The other is just the horizontal line y equals 5, where these intersect gives us our x values. And look at that symmetry. The intersection points are perfectly mirrored across the y axis, just like our algebra told us they would be. What started as an intimidating exponential equation has revealed itself to be fundamentally about symmetry and the elegant relationship between exponential and logarithmic functions. Thanks for joining me on this mathematical journey. If you enjoyed seeing how a complex exponential equation can transform into something much simpler through the right substitution, consider giving this video a like and subscribing for more explorations into the beautiful patterns hiding in mathematics.